Well, the collective effort of both the government and the industry is making good progress in uh, achieving this target of greening 80% of the buildings in Singapore. Um, the statistics in the latest benchmarking report is really encouraging. On the whole, uh, there is a reduction in the energy use intensity or EUI uh, that measures basically the amount of energy use per square meter of floor area and that have shown to have reduced uh, to, uh, by 11%. Uh, so that's an encouraging sign that uh, you know, positive steps are being taken. Uh, towards greening uh, the nation. Um, in most building types, the energy use is in fact reducing uh, in terms of the EUI, but um, the healthcare sector is the, sec the one sector that is still growing. And I think it is critical to look closely at that because as you know, Singapore is facing an aging population and healthcare requirements are going to be expected to continue to grow. So it is really important and timely that we look at uh, the energy use in those healthcare facilities. The other big sector that helped to drive towards the goal is really the residential sector. Yeah. So right now, the overall target that has been um, estimated is around 40% of the buildings that have been green right now. And uh, to further boost that number, I think tackling the one big sector in the residential sector would be an important uh, strategy as well. As you know, um, you know, everybody lives in a home and therefore to be able to make sure that sector is taken care of and green, particularly many of the existing uh, residential buildings uh, would further help boost that uh, target number. Well, we, we live in a digital world um, and information is important to help us understand the current condition and then to also help us then project uh, and predict the future. So I think the importance of sharing information uh, and data across the different aspects of design and construction and operation of our built environment is going to be, to me, one critical success factor. We got to look at our building stock in a life cycle way and not just you know looking at them in a discrete whether it's at design or at construction or at operation we need to really connect them and integrate that process together and that's where digitalization can play a major role to support that integration uh, by as i said sharing data uh, across the different phases of the life cycle of buildings and also to enable the different decision makers and stakeholders to you know, be able to analyze what is the current situation uh, in terms of performance um, and then project forward and make the right kind of decisions to support this uh, constant uh, growth towards energy efficiency. Well, there are many, many topics of interest and, um, in that transformation pathway. Um, so, and I'm sure, you know, the delegates will be engaging in many of those uh, topics of interest. However, personally, I think one of the interesting and emerging uh, topic is how can we create a clearer and more integrated uh, path that allow us to track the entire energy life cycle from the source to the production, generation, through the delivery, and then the end use. What happens typically is that the different sort of stakeholders um, tend to focus on their own business, on their own you know, sort of uh, activities. Uh, uh, someone who is producing energy would be only looking at the production, then the people who have to deliver the uh, Electricity to the end user would be looking at the net, the network, the distribution network, and then the end user is trying their best to be energy efficient. What we need really is to be able to develop a system that can accurately and effectively track the entire life cycle. Because 
that will enable us to figure out where the gaps are and where the inefficiencies are. Um, we do that very well here in Singapore with water, for example. Water is tracked from rainfall, um, you know, collection in the reservoir, and then from the deployment of seawater through desalination to generate you know, potable water, everything is measured. And the delivery is measured, the use is measured. And after use, the discarded water is also measured because it is then used to, uh, for regeneration. Um, they get clean and made into new water. Um, so that gets tracked very, very well. Now, of course, uh, water is something that you can see, you can touch, you can measure uh, easily, whereas energy is not visible. So it is a bit more challenging to actually track that. But nonetheless, I believe it is critical that we do that so that we can complete the life cycle uh, to be able to track those energy efficiency from the conversion rate to the transportation and then to the end use. In this way, we can then really uh, push the transformation of the energy uh, life cycle to the next level.